we've been talking about the one messenger from outer space that our planet has ever received or encountered. And of course, uh, his name is a name that all of us have known since we were children. And yet it's a name that tells us more about the origin of our world than any other name. It's the name of the one human being that has been able to leave our planet and go out into space beyond where our space shots go and actually encounter the supreme being that created our universe and come back and tell us what he is like and why he made us and what the point of this whole life here on earth is. And that uh, man is, of course, the man Jesus. And we've been talking about the fact that he is actually a historical figure. He is not a myth, but he is a historical figure more reliably recorded as far as his actions and his words are concerned than either Julius Caesar or any of the great uh, figures of that era. And the history that we have of him is found in the last quarter of the book that we call the Bible. It's actually the part called the New Testament. And that is far from being just religious myth. That is actually good, reliable history. And we have been talking about how we can trust that the people that wrote that history did actually observe the things that they wrote about and that they can be relied upon and their word can be trusted because, in fact, they died for the things that they wrote about. And there were many other eyewitnesses alive at the same time who observed the same events and read their accounts, and there was no public outcry that their accounts were uh, lies or were uh, inventions. Uh, rather, they were accepted as the truth. And so we've come to the point where we see that it is quite reasonable to believe that these men were actually alive when they saw these events that they recorded in the last quarter of the book that we call the Bible. What many of us have had trouble with is the fact that this all occurred so many years ago. And uh, I remember thinking myself, well, wait a minute, this occurred in the first century, that was 2,000 years ago. Now, maybe these men did write the truth about those days, but how can we be sure that somebody hasn't tampered with it since? And, of course, that's the problem you run up against in regard to most of our classical authors. I don't know if you realize it, but Caesar's History of the Gallic War is one of the books that those of us who studied Latin uh, had to be familiar with. And it's one of the books that we regard as the most reliable history books that we have. We read uh, Caesar's History of the Gallic War, and we have no doubt that what we're reading is what actually occurred in those days. And yet uh, the amazing fact is this, that Caesar's Gallic Wars actually record events that took place between 100 and 44 BC. And the first manuscript we have of the history of the Gallic Wars is, would you believe it, not 22 BC, which would be 20 years after the events, not even 100 AD, which would be 120 years after the events, not even 500 AD, which would be 520 years after the events. The first manuscript that we have, the earliest manuscript that we have that is still in existence of Caesar's Gallic Wars is dated 900 AD. And yet all of us who have studied Latin and uh, who have studied Roman history have absolute confidence that when we read Caesar's history of the Gallic Wars, we are reading what actually took place in those days. In spite of the fact that there is a thousand years, a period of a thousand years that has elapsed between when Caesar actually wrote his original manuscript and the manuscript that we have came into existence. So during that time, of course, you have a thousand years when long ago people had died who had 
observed the Gallic Wars, and there had been thousands and millions of people who lived in the interval, any one of whom could have got Caesar's original manuscript and changed it, and created all kinds of imaginary myths. And yet we do not question for a moment that what we read of the Gallic Wars is what Caesar actually wrote, in spite of the fact that we don't have his original manuscript, we don't even have the manuscript that was copied from his, we don't even have the manuscript that was copied from that copy of his, we don't even have a manuscript that was written within a hundred years of his life or death, we don't even have a manuscript that was written within 400 years of the Gallic Wars. Our earliest manuscript was actually written 900 AD, a thousand years after the Gallic Wars were fought. And yet we have no doubt in our minds that when we read the history of the Gallic Wars, we are reading what Caesar actually wrote. Now it's the same with most of the other classical authors. There is a vast gap between the manuscript that they originally wrote and the earliest manuscript that we have. In other words, you know that in those days, we did not have paper. We had a thing called papyrus and a thing called vellum, animal skin, and then this papyrus made out of reeds. And none of them were very permanent. They all deteriorated with age. And it was the normal pattern that scribes would copy the old manuscript onto new papyrus or the old manuscript onto new vellum and then would automatically destroy the old manuscript. And that's part of the reason why we have so few early manuscripts of the history books of those ancient days. It's the same, you know, with Plato's Republic. Probably none of us who studied philosophy at university have failed to study Plato's Republic. We all regard uh, his Republic as uh, a base text in Philosophy One. It is what everyone reads, and we have no doubt that when we read Plato's Republic, we read actually what he wrote, and we're reading what Socrates and he thought. And yet, Plato's Republic was written somewhere between 427 and 347 BC. That's when Plato well, lived. So, Plato's Republic was written somewhere about 400 BC. Now, do we have his original manuscript? No. Do we have the manuscript that was copied from his manuscript? No. Do we have a, another manuscript? No. Do we have a manuscript that was written within 200 years of his life? No. Do we have one that was written within 400 years? No. The earliest manuscript that we have of Plato's Republic is dated 900 AD, dated by carbon dating, which is reliable within a thousand or two thousand years. It becomes unreliable after you get into what you call tens of thousands of years or millions of years, but it's reliable in regard to a thousand or two thousand years. And that dates the earliest manuscript of Plato's Republic at 900 AD. Now, he wrote the Republic in 400 BC, so it's 12 or 1300 years have elapsed between when he wrote his original manuscript and when this manuscript that we have in our hands in one of our libraries came into existence. In other words, there were 12 or 1300 years during which anyone could have got Plato's original manuscript and changed it in all kinds of ways and rewritten it and recreated the whole theory and the philosophy. And yet not one of us in our philosophy class has questions that when we read Plato's Republic today, we're reading the actual manuscript that he wrote 1,500 to 2,500 years ago. So that's the kind of evidence that we have for ancient manuscripts and ancient histories. What kind of manuscript evidence have we for the New Testament history? Can we be sure that what they wrote in those days about Jesus is actually what we're reading today. Let's talk about